Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode and today I want to go back in history a little bit and look on the German squad tactics in World War II because they are pretty interesting and clever and I think we can learn a lot from them and become better squad leaders and team leaders in Red Orchestra. Uh, yeah, this video is focused for the SL and TL in RO2 so I think uh, you can learn a lot from here. So uh, this is a squad, uh, a German squad in World War II. I know the uniforms don't match, but don't focus on that. So the, the squad was consisted of uh, 10 people, one SL, one MG, one assistant MG, one carrier, uh, five riflemen and the second in command. Um, the SL's job was commanding the unit, uh, directing which targets the MG should attack. Uh, and when they were outside the combat, the squad leader had to make sure the equipment is in order, there's enough ammo for the persons in the squad and so on. Uh, and the second in command was uh, in charge when, when the SL either died or was absent or whatever. And his job was to communicate with the platoon and uh, and the other squads, uh, he, he was vital for coordination and he always stayed behind. Um, the MG, you know, the MG just shoots around. Uh, the assistant is the guy who, he was always the, uh, on the left side of the gunner. He was uh, changing the belt, uh, was fixing the MG if it broke. Uh, and if the MG died, he took his role. Uh, the carrier was just carrying stuff. <laughs> uh, he was checking the ammo, refilling, always staying to cover. He was pretty important. He carried a lot of ammo, so they needed to protect him. Then the riflemen, they participated in the battle. They worked like an assault team uh, with bayonets and grenades. They were basically the people who were pushing. Um, weapon. Uh, for weapons, the SL was carrying an MP40, MG was carrying MG42, Assault. Uh, only the Assault and the MG had pistols. The, the Assault only had a pistol, that, that was his only weapon. The, the Carrier and the Rifleman had uh, uh, Car 98 and the second in command had Car 98, so all those guys had. And uh, two nades. So that was that was the setup for the weapons, and they had as many clips and rounds and magazines and everything exactly like uh, you have in Red Orchestra. So that was that's quite an accurate number. So uh, yeah, this is what the squad consists like, and every time they attacked or uh, moving around, they always stayed in this. Um, uh, organization they were either uh, moving in horizontal line or vertical line or in a march where they were uh, compact but they were marching only when there was no uh, uh, immediate threat of an attack or something like that so this was just moving around they always kept this order uh, but uh, even on attack the SL was always the front guy followed by the MG followed by assault and carrier and riflemen and the last one was the second in command and if the SL spotted an enemy or something like that he stayed behind instructed the MG where to shoot and basically everyone was uh, starting to take positions on the flanks the riflemen uh, they, they worked like a group um, yes yeah, so let's see what they said about this so in order to be a leader in the field a superior must display an exemplary bearing before his men in the moment of danger and be willing if necessary to die for them the weak are then guided by his example and by his disregard of self in accepting privations and dangers what what we should understand from here is that you see a lot of new players and you know like they say in, in Red Orchestra that SL, stay behind, uh, you need to stay to cover and don't go first, let the infantry push forward. Yeah, 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 well, the thing is, it never happens. No, no matter how many times you, if you are a squad leader and you tell the people, hey guys, move forward and I'll follow you, they, they, they just don't care. But if you are a good squad leader and you are like level 99 or something higher, 
people follow you. I mean, I I started to not uh, tell people to push forward and I stay to cover. I'm usually a, a, an aggressive squad leader and always try to flank and push beyond the enemy lines and uh, go behind and cut the reinforcements and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think people should start uh, playing SL more aggressive and just push harder and not rely on the team because it's exactly like it's here. You, you are the leader and you must display exemplary bearing before your men. And if you push, they will follow. Just just uh, press Bravo B and do follow me. And I don't know, maybe they follow or say something in chat. And yeah, you, you have smoke. You, you are a good player. I mean, why, why not to push? Why stay behind? Why wait? Red Orchestra is a, is a game of, I don't know, like constant pushing, being always on alert and moving fast and stuff like that. So I think people should concentrate, uh, squad leaders should concentrate more on that. Um, so in World War II, this was a platoon uh, and a platoon was consisted of four squads. I have the same icon, I know, but uh, each platoon consisted of four squads and the platoon commander, let's call him the team leader, would instruct the squads where to position, where to attack, where to go and stuff like that. So you consider this guy the TL in Red Orchestra. Uh, you have a general, most of you know the map already, the maps already and you know where to tell the squad leaders to go and you take the decisions based on the, on the recon plan and so on. So the squad leaders should follow the orders of the TL if he's decent and knows how to command. If not, just push on the flanks and stuff like that. But uh, what I'm trying to say is you, you can't micromanage a team to push like this and do stuff like that. And, you know, just push and tell the people to follow you. Now, let's take a look on how they attacked, like how does a squad or a platoon attack? Uh, it's saying here that it is not the task of the rifleman to engage in firefights of long duration in order to gain fire superiority. In the attack, it is the vigorous shock power of the rifleman with bayonet which overcomes the enemy. So the, the idea is that, again, the squad leader was always in the front. He was uh, doing everything, uh, followed by the MG. He was putting suppression fire and killing people and so on. And only then the rifleman started to push. So what we do in Red Orchestra is always teach the players with the rifleman to uh, push forward, go in the cap zone, kill the enemy, blah, blah. But you stay behind like a fucking coward doing nothing. So it's pretty much uh, pe people in general follow the order of the TL and then the SL. So the TL does his own thing because he's always concentrated on something. But the, sec the squad leader should always push and people to follow him. I mean... If you just camp around, it's not great. But of course, you need to take caution and not die all the time. That's another thing. But um, let's have a look on how the Germans attacked an enemy. So let's say those are motherfucker Russians, uh, communists, Bolsheviks. And here are the Germans. And they saw them and they tried to attack. So how did they attack? Well the first thing they would uh, they would uh, drop artillery so they had here uh, artillery they would drop mortars always always behind behind the enemy to cut the reinforcements and you know stuff like that so first thing they would hit them with artillery and uh, then they would set up on the flanks uh, two fixed mgs that's how they always did it uh, shooting, suppressing, doing killings and all that uh, uh, supported they were the fixed MGs were supported by uh, one light MG uh, one light MG means MG42 in the center to support the attack so this guy was shooting as well uh, after the initial stage of uh, this thing the assault was performed by two squads uh, supported by supported by light mg so uh, they they were pushing through the flanks uh let's say uh squad one 
S1 and Squad 2, both of them having uh, light MGs, MG42s. So they were pushing exactly like I said here in vertical line formation, but something like this on flanks. So MG was uh, SL was first, followed by MG and the other people moving like that. Bam, 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 bam. So they were really focused on the on the uh, MGs, the light MGs to put suppressing fire on the enemy. And always they always did this in the entire war and it worked perfect for them. Uh, the first squad, squad one would push directly. Uh, let me change the color here. The squad one would push always directly on the main objective while the squad two would push behind them and cut the reinforcements and everything to basically to encircle them. When they were encircled, uh, the job of the squad leaders was to ensure discipline and prepare for a, a counter attack or whatever may happen. So what we need to understand from here and how can we apply this to Red Orchestra is like imagine you attack um, uh, I don't know, um, let's think Charlie on Red October. Um, one second. So, Charlie is like building something like this. Um, you should instruct as a TL uh, the squads where to push. So squad either one take control of the left flank, SL2 push behind or whatever, and the other squads push and so on. So you, you need to, as a TL, your job is to instruct the squad leaders where they should go. But always, always you need to focus on the flanks. It, 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 I always see whenever you lose, you always push forward. People always push forward. Just going forward, forward, forward and keep dying because they are all covering the sides and everything and it's it's hard for to find the defenders. But if you cover on the flanks and you manage to sneak a squad leader behind them and cut the reinforcements and everything, you, you will always be successful. So uh, TLs should focus more on how to flank properly, how to tell the squad leaders. And again, the squad leaders must know the maps perfectly where to position themselves to stay alive, where to push the flanks and uh, so on. So, yeah, think about this. Uh, think on how to attack properly. Think about the flankings. Be a better squad leader. Be a better TL. Always try to improve and Red Orchestra will be much more fun for everyone. So I hope you like this video. I'll see you on the next one where I will try to... The next video will be about squad leading and how I do it. Maybe you will learn a thing or two uh, uh, to see how I play SL aggressively, how I try to push the flanks, how I get behind the objectives and stuff like that with actual footage from the game. So yeah, wait for the next episode. I'll see you then. Have a good day. Bye bye.